Hi everyone, welcome back to Desert Out Forge. I'm Tim, and in this episode we're going to talk about another basic technique, bending and curving. Before we get started, I'd like to give a shout out to Jack Dog from Morayfield, Queensland, Australia. Jack made a pair of forging tweezers based on my video and sent me pictures of it. Thank you Jack, you're awesome. The first thing I'd like to talk about is the forces that affect the material during uh, bending and the changes that occur to the section of the material. In order to bend our material, we need three points of contact, two points to support and the third one to insert the force at. We insert the force uh, perpendicular to the length of the material along these yellow arrows. When we do that, changes occur to the bending area uh, on the outside of the curvature, stretching occurs. On the inside of the curvature, upsetting occurs. That will affect our section, and I'm going to show you uh, what happens. So to show you what happens to the section of the material when we bend it, I made a cut in the middle of the bend perpendicular to the length. So you can see that the outside of the curvature stretched and become thinner, and the inside of the curvature upset and because it became thicker. You can compare it to the original um, section here. I'm going to show you a square bar as well. So here's the same thing on a square bar. I cut the curve in half and you can see how the section changed drastically. It became thinner on the outside and thicker on the inside. Also the surfaces became curved. This can cause a problem when you do scroll work and have to join scrolls uh, and I'm going to talk about how to mitigate this when we talk about scrolls later. There are many ways to do bends and curves using different tools and methods. I'm going to walk you through a few of them. First I'm going to show you how to do a simple bend using the anvil and the hammer. So we brought our uh, material to forging temperature, place it on the edge of the anvil and strike on the hammer and bend it down. That's the most simple bending technique. Now the length of your temperature, the length of your heat, will significantly uh, influence how the material bends. It, the material bends more where the most uh, intense heat is and less where it's cooler. So keep that in mind. If you want to bend at a specific point, you have to have the most heat there and place that on the uh, edge of the anvil. So very important to keep in mind when bending something on the anvil and the hammer, as you bend down, this portion will bend up and you have to either push it back or control it somehow. I'm going to show you a few methods to control that uh, bending up. So if you want to do a more controlled bend and you have a leg vise, you can use that. Put the material in the leg vise and your bend is going to be and just bend it with the hammer. This way you won't have bending off of the side only where you want it. So if you don't have a vice but you have someone to help you, you can use a striker, a person with a sledgehammer to help you control the bend. Make sure that the sledgehammer is flush with the outside of the anvil. So this is an easy way to uh, prevent the upbending of the material. So when we do a simple bend, the corner of the bend is going to be rounded and you can clearly see the distorted section, uh, the thinner here and thicker on the inside. Uh, 
In order to get a uh, sharp and square corner, we gotta use the multi-step method that I'm gonna explain in a future video. Next, we're gonna talk about creating curves. Uh, first, I'm gonna show you a method that we just use the horn of the anvil to curve the piece of material. But the very, very first step before we start any curving is to straighten our material. So to start a bend, we have to uh, bring our heated up material to the horn of the anvil and start to strike uh, past the horn of the anvil. We have to start at the end because if you do a full circle or a, a larger curve, it's gonna be very difficult to do the ends later. So we always start with the end. And we just strike, strike, and we always come back and forth and start curving. Also, uh, you're gonna have a little bit of a twisting, you're gonna fix it up on the flat. Now I'd like to demonstrate something that occurs when you don't start the bend at the end. As you uh, bend down, this end, due to inertia, will not bend down. Inertia is the tendency to remain unchanged. So that mass there wants to stay there where it is. Uh, in order to bend this down, you've got to come back and actually start at the end and shape it that way so it's already bent. As I said, if you don't start at the end, it's gonna be very difficult to fix these mistakes later. The next method of bending will involve a hardy block that is cut about a 45 angle on one side and just a block on the other side, the anvil and the hammer. So we heated our material to forging temperature and place it uh, over the block, the uh, slope side, and we start to strike starting at the end again and uh, gradually going over where the heat is. This way, uh, this method is good for uh, hot and cold applications as well. And we just straighten up and there's our curve. So in the next method, we're gonna use a bending fork hardy and a hammer. So as with any other method, we brought the material to forging temperature and place it in between the forks in a diagonal uh, fashion and start to uh, hit on the end, on the outside, starting at the end as usual and creating the curve this way. Bending forks you can use uh, another way when you place the material here and you strike on in between the, uh, the forks. Next I'm going to show you a method I use to bend large and uh, slight curves. I'm using a section of an I-beam uh, and a stand and placing the, uh, the piece on the uh, flanges and I'm hitting in between. Starting at the end and gradually moving across. This is a very good uh, tool and uh, setup to do these slight curves. I don't have a fly press or anything like that, so I have to do like this. I use this tool and this setup to uh, make the uh, railing parts of a spiral staircase I built a couple years ago. I'm gonna put a picture up there for this. So if you wanna, if you over bent your piece, you're gonna flip it over and you can just hit it on the outside and then it's taking it up a little bit more. So once you reach your uh, desired curvature, you check for twists. If you do have any twists, you can s uh, switch it sideways and hit it that way. So large I-beam, very good tool. When I mentioned the three points of contact in the beginning of the video, I forgot to mention that one of those points of contact or points of force has to oppose the other two in order to be able to bend the material. I'm gonna put some explanatory pictures uh, showing each tool where those points and uh, forces occur.
So next I'm going to show you a small practice project that you can practice bending with. We're going to need a 3 pound hammer, a 2 pound hammer and a 5 8 by 5 8 square stock. This uh, practice is a little bit of, on the intermediate side because it involves multiple curve changes. We start this project with the 5 8 by 5 8 square stock. I'm going to forge a 5 inch long taper. I already uh, hammered the edges down to create a rustic look. So we forged our taper that is about five inches long and took the edges off and straightened out everything. We're gonna move to the two pound hammer and move over to the horn of the anvil. So next we're gonna heat up our material and uh, do a multiple curve bend on the taper. Uh, this time we're gonna start at the uh, beginning of the taper instead of at the end and then gradually go towards the, uh, the tip. We have a nice long heat and we start at the uh, beginning of the taper and uh, start with our first curve on the thicker part of the anvil, then we gradually move towards the thinner part, finishing off at the very end. Uh, the, the key to this design is to have changing radiuses on the curves and have it gradually going thinner, th uh, smaller and smaller. And then we make sure everything is flat. Nice and straight. There you have it guys, we successfully completed this practice project. Uh, again, the details you have to pay attention to when doing this feature is the gradually decreasing radius of each curve. You can utilize the horn of the anvil to achieve this effect. Uh, in this situation, this is a end of a picket and we are going to revisit this in a future video and do something awesome. So this is the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new today. If you'd like to support my channel, please subscribe, like, share and comment below. If you'd like to see my work, please visit my website www.desertalforge.com. Thanks for watching and see you next time.